Hey, it's Mike here, and today, the new Chinese coronavirus. We're gonna look at what we know about it, how much of a threat it likely is, and its origins, which to me at least are very frustrating. And it's spreading fast enough, so I had to edit in an update. Now it's in 11 countries, mostly Asia, but also including a case in Australia, three in France, and two in the United States. And total coronavirus cases is now at 1,321, and we're at 41 total deaths and China has locked down multiple cities with a total of around 20 million people in lockdown to prevent this disease from spreading. The symptoms are fever, shortness of breath, and coughing, which can progress into pneumonia, which is of course a lung infection. And if you're watching this and you have shortness of breath, no, you probably don't have the coronavirus. Obviously, if you actually think you might have the disease, go to the doctor, but for the rest of you, yeah, just relax. Let's do this, let's learn some stuff. And as many of you know, I'm studying for a master's in public health, and we've done some pandemic simulations and things like that, which is making this all very interesting to me because it's real, it's actually happening. And so let's get to some of the basics of this coronavirus, not to be confused with the coronavirus of Spring Break Cabo 2013. Chaz, bro, I feel really sick, like, ugh. Me too, Trent, bro. I think, I think I'm gonna, bro, like, <laughs> dude, you think it could be like the 11 Coronas we each have? Bro, you think there's anything like toxic in that Corona that might like make us puke? No, bro, Sif, so like nothing I could even think of. It happened to both of us. Do you think it's like a virus? Oh my God, bro, Seppi. I think we might have what could be called the coronavirus. <laughs> Fully realizing that bad joke was, well, let's just say my main motivation for actually making this video. I'm kidding, and to be completely clear, it's not the coronavirus in this case, it's simply another iteration of the coronavirus. The coronavirus is a large family of viruses. It ranges from the common cold, it's one of over 100 strains that can cause that, all the way to severe acute respiratory syndrome, or you guessed it, you didn't guess it? Okay, SARS. If you remember, SARS killed 750 people in 2003. It was a lot of hubbub about it and some lessons to learn from it, which we'll talk about in a bit. But it's called coronavirus simply because corona means crown. And if you look at this virus under a microscope, the little protrusions coming out of the virus kind of look like a crown. This time around, the strain has been creatively called novel coronavirus, which just means new coronavirus. And the abbreviation is 2019-NCOV. I mean, I'd love to see what these scientists name their children. New child 2013, behave yourself. Comment down below what you actually think it should be called. This is gonna be good. And to be fair though, it was actually the WHO that named it, and they've also not declared it a global health emergency, so most of the world can just relax, as I mentioned before. However, we do now have confirmation of person-to-person -person transmission that's contagious, and this has happened, according to this paper, not just from family member to family member, but also in a healthcare setting, which is a little worrisome. So yeah, the disease is spreading. It's in the US, there have been just a couple cases so far, but how dangerous is this really? And a few people have kind of backed up and said, hey, actually, this is probably not as dangerous as you think. The generic contrasting figure is that the flu in 2017 and 2019, that flu season killed 60,000 Americans alone. It's been less than a month since this coronavirus was discovered, but it's killed about 26 people. And so it's probably not super lethal, but here's the thing is that it just got discovered and it hasn't had a chance to spread around yet. So we don't really know what it's gonna do. And the concern is that, yeah, it might not be super lethal right now, but it could evolve into a more lethal virus. And like the flu, this disease has mainly been killing people who are older or have a disease or are immunosuppressed, which is still a very valid concern. We don't want that happening. Another contrasting figure comes from another coronavirus, which you may have heard of, which is MERS or Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, which has a case mortality rate of 35%. So 35% of people who have a confirmed case end up passing away from that one. And obviously it's pretty preliminary, but it appears that the case fatality rate for this new strain of coronavirus, the novel one, is thankfully under 10%, well under 10% actually. Thankfully, China is doing an absurd amount to contain this. They again have that lockdown and then they're also building a hospital in Wuhan, the city where this originated, which is supposed to be completed within two weeks. And looking at the amount of like bulldozers they have, it's actually laughable how long it takes to get things done in the US sometimes. But seriously, I feel like they have more excavators working on this hospital than they have had cases of the disease. Obviously, I'm kidding. Now let's get down to the origin of this or what we know so far. And to me, I find this to be very irksome, 
Very frustrating, but from this paper, quote, Interestingly, G et al. have performed an evolutionary sequence analysis suggesting that snake is the most likely reservoir for the 2019 NCOV-15. What, is there some 1980s comic book villain named Snake who was responsible for this? Did snakes bite people? Is this like a venom situation? No, the reality is that people were biting snakes. Quote, consistent with this novel idea, Snake was indeed sold at the Huanan Seafood Wholesale Market where many initial patients had history of exposure to the virus prior to their illness. And this isn't just a place for seafood, according to Scientific American, quote, the first group of patients hospitalized were workers or customers at a local seafood wholesale market, which also sold processed meats and live consumable animals, including poultry, donkeys, sheep, pigs, camels, foxes, badgers, bamboo rats, hedgehogs, and reptiles. Yes, bamboo rat is a real thing, not to be confused with pizza rat who eats pizza. This rat eats bamboo and uh, it's really cute and sadly people eat them. It's really not surprising when you think about what this place actually is. It's like an all you can eat menagerie of infectious disease. It's like an edible circus of viral contaminants. It's like a charcuterie board of cute infectious animals that don't deserve to be eaten. And while the snake thing is not completely tied down, another one that has been proposed is bats. So when this video of a woman eating bat soup surfaced, let's just say all hell broke loose. Ozzy Osbourne really dodged a bullet there. Yes, we're still joking about the time that Ozzy accidentally ate a bat head. So perhaps this is not that much different from the Mongolian couple who ate a raw marmot and ended up getting the Black Plague. I did a recent video on it, hashtag carnivore. Thankfully that was contained and let it be no surprise that both coronaviruses, SARS and MERS, were also contracted from animals. SARS was believed to be transferred from civet cats, which aren't actually cats, they're closer to mongooses, mongeese. They're considered a delicacy in southern China, and guess where some tested positive for SARS at? A live animal market. And according to this study, MERS was quite certainly contracted from sick camels, so really not from eating the camels, but from using them and then getting sneezed on. But in terms of eating random wild animals, which is the issue here, back to Scientific American who put it pretty well, quote, the 2019 NCOV outbreak is another reminder that people should limit the consumption of wild animals to prevent zoonotic infections or animal to human infections. I especially don't think we need to risk the health of an entire population just to eat something that is viewed as a delicacy. I mean, it's bad enough to kill animals for taste pleasure alone, but to also be putting people at risk of random infectious diseases, not cool. But if you're looking at the numbers and you're looking toward the future, what I view as a much bigger threat here is not the wild animals that are consumed, although they are a threat, but it's actually the factory farmed animals that are consumed. I mean, remember that 2017 to 2018 flu killed 60,000 people in the US alone. As is showcased in the new Netflix docuseries, Pandemic, there are scientists who literally spend their days traveling from factory farm to factory farm, trying to stop the next biggest disease from happening. The people who spend their life studying this believe that the next biggest threat is coming from these confined animal feeding operations, which are of course a result of people demanding meat. Here's the dude from the documentary, I'll just let him say something. A pandemic influenza will likely come from an animal and it will be a new and novel, never seen before virus. Now it could be swine flu or avian flu, more likely some type of avian flu because we have about 60 billion chickens that are raised every single year in confined conditions where they are constantly coming in contact, it's dirty. It's a very good breeding ground for mutating flu viruses. The New York Times covered this topic and I was just amazed at this picture of a turkey farm. If we're gonna get crazy new strains of any disease, it's gonna come from this type of place. And you know, maybe we should do something about this. Uh, well, you can start by not eating animals and thank you for not eating animals. In conclusion, the coronavirus threat level is pretty unknown right now, but likely not huge for the average person in the world. However, if you are in those certain areas of China near Wuhan, you might want to maybe get out of there. This is all because people want to eat random animals like snakes and others that they consider to be a delicacy. And imagining that this coronavirus makes it over to the US, for example, and kills a few thousand people, that's still going to be dwarfed by this season's strain of the flu, just to put things into perspective. And finally, I like to compare things to a vegan sort of world and non-vegan world, and this is a situation where the vegan scenario would just virtually not have these risks. Worth mentioning. 
All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to tell me what you think this strain of coronavirus should actually be called. And let me know what you think the real threat level of this is. I'm curious to know what you guys think. All right, feel free to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, is this the CDC? Cool. Yeah, I'd just like to report that me and my bro Chaz actually contracted the coronavirus a while back. Yeah, well, my therapist says that Chaz wasn't actually real. He was just a hallucinization that resulted from the coronavirus. But if that's the case, how do I have this note in my pocket that says, I'll always be with you, man. My bro Leo Leoxin free love Chaz, okay? So is that a yes to coming in for testing? No, okay.